All right. Well, appreciate the invitation to speak today. Um, and I'm going to present to you today on, on behalf of my uh, colleagues, Ajay Sharma and, and John Kush, uh, is a result of a somewhat unique long-term study that the Forest Service has had at the Escambia Experimental Forest, looking at the long-term impacts of biennial seasonal burning on longleaf pine survival and productivity. Um, before I'll start, I think I, I should preface this talk with, I, I found a lot of the talks very interesting today, in particular, some of the wildlife uh, implications of burning at different times of the year. And so I, I fully recognize that there are different reasons why we're managing forests and different concerns. It's always about your objectives. Um, but today, what I'm going to talk about is kind of more timber centric, um, as some folks are you know, prioritizing timber as their primary means for which they're managing their land. So that's, that's really the scope that I'm going to talk about today. But I fully do recognize uh, some of the diversity of, of uses that we have. So basically, just to get into the background, uh, as pretty much hey, everyone John, in the room. Yeah, John, I'm sorry. So it's got it's got you in presenter mode right now. Okay. If you could right click and um, or share your a different screen. Let me just share that again. Is that better? Uh, hit, hit start the slideshow and uh, I'll let you know. Okay, it's, it's not, if you don't need your notes, if you'll just right click right there on your slide. Yeah. And uh, click uh, hide pre presenter view. Yep. Better? Uh, it kicked you out of the slideshow for some reason. Yep, try it again. That's perfect, thank you, sir. Yep, all right, so getting back on track. Um, so as pretty much everyone in the room is, is where longleaf, uh, prescribed fires are primary tool, uh, for managing longleaf pine on the coastal plain, we're burning typically if we're following a restoration prescription, you know, one, every four, one between one and every four years. Um, and historically kind of what we followed is a paradigm of burning in the, in the winter or the dormant season. And there are obvious, you know, logistical reasons for why we do this. Safety, uh, it's, it's much easier to prevent crown scorch and, and in general damage to the trees. Um, and so that's kind of been the overwhelming paradigm here in the Southeast. But from an ecological perspective, that kind of paradigm that we've been following is somewhat inconsistent with the uh, ecological history of fire in the southeast predominantly burning uh, as, a, as a result of lightning strikes in the growing season. And so there's an interest in incorporating more burning outside of the dormant season to do things like uh, fight back hardwoods or, or promote wiregrass or some of the other uh, restoration aspects that we might be interested in. Um, some of the other reasons, and I think this is probably the most pertinent reason where there's an interest in, in burning outside the growing or the dormant season, is that simply it's, it's a lot of the success of the restoration efforts that we've had. If you think about all the longleaf pine acres expansion, and now more recently, uh, some of the shortleaf pine uh, expansion that we've, we've put on the landscape, uh, if we are going to be managing that land in terms of uh, an open woodland, that's certainly going to require prescribed fire. And I am a bit dubious about whether we have the resources on hand right now to handle all this acreage that we've put out there. And so what we're going to have to do to handle this is simply either A, get more burners, or B, uh, expand the burning windows. And that means probably moving outside of the dormant season for some of our burns. Um, now, that being said, there are certainly some concerns about doing this. And they, largely for most of the foresters I talk to, it's, it's a big concern about productivity. And a couple examples showing this, uh, one, uh, one that I'm gonna highlight here was actually from Minnesota. It was a long-term study, uh, 32 years uh, long, where they repeated, they repeated uh, spring burning in an oak savanna. And basically what they found is that stands that were burned four or more times per decade, 
they declined in density of six to eight percent annually. Now they're managing for savannas; they're not so interested in productivity. But you certainly wouldn't want to be losing six to eight percent of your of your uh, volume out there on an annual basis. And largely, what they found is that fire contributed to mortality by wounding the trees, and so it was like, and that and that led to subsequent infection. So it was death by a thousand cuts. You know, you continually burn and burn and burn, and eventually something's going to wear down the tree. And this is concerning because oak, as again, many of you know, is, is also a fire adapted species, uh, uh, thick bark, and, and is adapted to withstand frequent burning. Um, another example, and this is the earlier iteration of the study I'm going to talk about today, uh, Bill Boyer found that in uh, repeated biennial burning in different seasons, that burning actually had a negative effect on productivity compared to not uh, unburned plots, but that there was no effect of seasonal burning, so that the individual seasons in which they burned didn't have any effect. But this is only after 10 years. And so there, there are some potential concerns and there are studies out there showing that this repeated frequent burning can lead to a loss of productivity. And so that really led us into the end uh, continuing this study a little bit further and asking some basic questions like whether biennial burning outside the winter season will negatively affect long leaf pine productivity, whether the combination of mechanical treatment or, me or chemical treatments with seasonal burning can impact productivity and whether there's an impact of initial size and season on productivity. So what I'm, I'm showing you here on the left is actually the original uh, study plan that I dug out of a, uh, a cat filing cabinet here at the Forest Service in Auburn from 1973 of this study. And um, just to give you guys some background, the study was conducted at the uh, Scambia Experimental Forest in southern Alabama, uh, just outside of East Bruton. And in its original iteration, uh, when Bill Boyer started this, uh, in the study, the study was regenerated from the late 1950s, uh, naturally regenerated uh, from seed tree harvest. And at the time when Bill started his study in 1973, the trees were 14 to 16 years old, pole sized, about 23 foot tall, on average three inches in diameter. And they ended up thinning these stands down to about 500 trees per acre, or approximately a nine by nine spacing. Okay, as time went on, 1990, the stands needed to be thinned. They thinned it down to 70 to 75 square feet of basal area. And so this is where we're at with this study. We picked the study up from 1995 to 2018. At this point, the tree ages was 32 to 55. So we're working with older, larger trees at this point. And remember, Bill found early on in his, in his initial study that burning in all seasons had a negative effect compared to not burning at all, but that individual seasons didn't have any effect. So just to give you an idea of the experimental design, again, this is an ancient, ancient uh, document at this point, but um, we use our, originally it was a randomized complete block design combining uh, three different fire seasons, winter, spring, growing season or, or summer, and uh, a no fire treatment. And then additionally, on top of that, we layered uh, three different vegetation control methods. There's mechanical, which was done every five years, where individual stems above 1.3 meters in height uh, were removed through clipping. You had a chemical treatment uh, with actually 2,4-D uh, that was done in the first year of the experiment only, and then no additional treatment. Uh, the biennial burns uh, started in 1974 and have continued throughout the experiment. So in total, uh, the trees in the study that I'm going to present today have been burned 22 times. Uh, the fires were uh, predominantly strip head fires with flame lengths less than one meter and the rate of spread less than two meters per minute. Um, so just to give you an idea of what these plots look like. So this is a picture from a winter burn. And you can see the plots, which were a little bit less than a half acre in size. Um, you have some of those trees that were measured. Those are the internal trees that we took the measurements on to avoid any edge effect. And if you, you can look outside, some of those trees and the edges are not measured. Those are just there uh, to provide a buffer for us. So that'll provide you a little bit of context for uh, what these, this place actually looked like. Hey, John, I'm sorry to interrupt you again. Yeah. Your, your slides are not advancing. Uh-oh. 
So the people, <laughs> I, I was wondering if new ones were going to pop up and I, I've gotten several messages saying, I'm not seeing anything. Uh-oh. All right. Um, hmm. All right. That's an odd situation. I'll, I'll back up and try to put it back in presentation mode. Maybe that'll okay. advance. We can try. All right. So what, what you might be able to do, you have two monitors in front of you, right? Yeah. Share the monitor that the, your full presentation pops up on and not share the PowerPoint that way. If that makes any sense. Yep. Okay, can you see that? I can see it if you All go right. ahead and put it into slide share. Is it advanced now? It, 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 it's not advancing. Try hitting it again. Okay, it's moving there. We're seeing the presentation mode, but it's better than nothing. Okay, so essentially, I'll just let you guys take a look at the experimental design again, as that was really the part that I I verbalized the rest, but so there's, there was the, the layout essentially in the randomized complete block of the different combinations of seasonal burning and not burning and um, a picture of the plot themselves. So that's your uh, example of your winter burn plot and the internal measurement trees. All right, so for the measurement or for the results, uh, what we'll do initially is we're gonna look at all the initial treatments out there in the combinations. And this is a very busy graph. So essentially the first letter, W is winter, S is spring, G is the growing season or summer, and N is a no burn. So the first letter represents a, the season of burn. And the second letter, C for chemical, W for mechanical, or N for no additional treatment. So the first letter is always season of burn. The second letter is the additional treatment. And if you, you can look at these two graphs, which are representing survival over the whole 23-year period and diameter growth, uh, essentially you see no clear pattern. And statistically, we didn't see a significant relationship with any season of fire or any uh, additional vegetation uh, treatment on the uh, productivity or survival longleaf pine. All right. So we'll go over to the height growth and volume growth. Uh, again, same time period, uh, looking at the same treatments. Again, we just didn't see any, any differentiating pattern in terms of when they grew with height or how much they grew in height or volume growth at all. So it seems as though these combinations of mechanical treatments and, and seasonal biennial burning really didn't affect these uh, mature longleaf pine trees. So what we did is, since we didn't see an effect of any of the mechanical treatments, we ended up combining everything and just pulling everything into the seasonal burn and we reanalyzed it again. So you're just looking at the, the effect of seasonal burning now with more degrees of freedom or statistical power. And in terms of survival and diameter growth across the board, uh, again, no effect of seasonal burning, no matter what season or no effect in comparison to the plots where we didn't burn at all, the NS, there was no impact. Jumping over to height growth and volume growth, there's a bit more of an impact of height growth where actually the seasonal burning treatments biologically produce more growth, but statistically there was no relationship. And, and the same could be said for, uh, let's see, click back, the volume growth, uh, no statistical relationship there. All right, so getting into the, the questions about the size impacts. So ignoring seasonal burning all together, just pooling it all, uh, we, we found a significant impact of sizes. It probably isn't a big surprise to anyone in the room. Essentially the smallest size trees at the beginning of the experiment, and these were 32 uh, year old trees at this point, uh, they were about 40% less likely to survive than some of the largest trees at the beginning of the experiment. 
And then if we look at the interaction of size and season, uh, we didn't see, now this was not a statistically significant result. However, if you take a look, there is a pretty strong biological uh, impact. Uh, the winter burning and the, uh, the growing season burning, which is the brown and the red, yet a much stronger impact on survival, uh, especially in the smaller size classes than he did in the spring burning or the no burning. So that, to me, at least from a management perspective, is a pretty important result. All right, a few caveats I wanted to mention about these, these uh, findings. Uh, one, and this is in my mind, I think the effect of fuel loading uh, may have overridden the effects of seasonal burning. So keeping in mind that these plots were kept under a biennial burning regime uh, pretty much all the way from 1973 through 2018. So we never really had that opportunity to build up a lot of the fuel. And I think for that reason, the impact of, of uh, the different seasons was perhaps overridden by simply not having enough fuel to burn. Uh, another important caveat uh, was simply the conditions we burned under. Uh, we certainly were not trying to burn uh, on any days that would, would be potentially questionable or cause damage as the Escambia Experimental Forest uh, is, is a private, uh, private property. And uh, certainly our, our goal is not to be killing any of the uh, mature trees. Um, and then the size of our burns. Again, our plots were less than a half acre in size. So you know, we didn't necessarily, while these aren't the smallest plot sizes necessarily you'd see in a, a research burn, uh, it certainly wasn't an operational scale size burn. So we didn't have some of that potentially heterogeneity of, of fire behavior that you may get that may have produced uh, a, a different result given um, a larger burn size. So some potential implications uh, from the findings. Uh, biennial burning outside the, the dormant season uh, with or without the additional vegetation control really had minimal impacts on the productivity and survival of our 30 plus year old longleaf pine. Uh, larger diameter trees survive biennial burning in all seasons better than the smaller diameter trees did. Uh, and that biennial burning, uh, uh, the growing season burns uh, should have minimal impact uh, on longleaf pine survival if the trees are larger than 20 centimeters in diameter. So with that, I'd be happy to take any questions and I apologize for the technical issues. Hey, no worries on that. It, it happens. I think we've done pretty <laughs> good today not running into major technical issues. All right, does anybody have questions for John? All right, did Boyer look at diameter outside of the bark or diameter inside of the bark? And does it make a difference? I believe Boyer looked at outside the bark uh, diameter. I can certainly check on that. Um, you know, it would just be a matter, it, it'd be a function, probably there would be a similar relationship. It's just the, the uh, diameter would slide down a little bit smaller towards, towards the smaller end. So I don't think biologically it would have much of an impact. All right, are there any more questions for John? All right, John, thank you, sir. Yep, no problem. Appreciate your update on uh, that work and good luck continuing it.